Hello my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog Books for Christian Girls and welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where I talk mainly about Christian fiction. Today I am doing another really exciting video here at my desk. I really like filming at my desk. I've been saying that. I feel like I do some really chatty videos here but they're just so much fun and this one is got very high potential to be very very fun because it's another tier ranking video. I did a tier ranking video a few months ago ranking all of the Kindle Unlimited books I read in 2023 and I loved every single aspect of doing that video. The organizing, the planning, the filming, the editing, that was all so much fun and y'all seem to really like that one too and I'm so glad because it was so much fun to do. Like I cannot tell y'all how much fun I had doing that one. So we're gonna do another tier ranking video but it's actually going to be tier ranking the first 50 books I read this year because I just finished my 50th book in the wee hours of this morning. We had a really crazy thunderstorm and I can't sleep when it's thunderstorming so I just stayed up and read my 50th book and I really enjoyed it so it worked out great. I did tweak my my chart I don't, what do you call this? I don't know. I did tweak it and I'll get into that in a minute but real quick I have like two or three announcements I need to share. So the first thing is, as of filming this, now I am filming this on April 10th, 2024. So Amazon is currently having a buy three for the price of two sale, and I found about 40 books I would recommend. So I will link that affiliate link down below if y'all would like to check it out. Here is a sneak preview of the, some of the books. By the time I edit this video and get it posted in a couple of days, a couple of them may be off or there may be a couple more, but these are the current ones I have found and I just wanted to share that with y'all because I talk about quite a few of these books often. I'm trying to think if any of them I'm going to be talking about today are on this list. No, I don't think so. None of them are. Well, that's a bummer, but I'm going to be talking about lots of other books, so that's fine. Another second little announcement. I can't remember my third announcement. What was my third announcement? I do not remember my third announcement, so I'm just going to have to like pop in when I remember it, if I remember it. Maybe. But my second one is that yesterday the blog Books for Christian Girls has turned 11 years old. And that is just absolutely incredible. So if you have a YouTube account and are subscribed to this channel, hop over to my community page and you will see this post and feel free to just comment a celebratory emoji and you'll be entered to win a book. And I don't know what book yet because we'll go back and discuss, like if you win, we'll discuss like what book would you want that I've talked about, what sounds interesting and I'll send it to you. For those internationally, it may have to be a gift card instead of a book, but you know, it's just a little like low key chill. I'm doing it over on here, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Instagram. I don't feel like our TikTok account is quite big enough to do a giveaway over there yet, but once that one hits some bigger milestones and I post more frequently on there, I will do a giveaway on there at some point. But for this 11th birthday, it's amazing, but there are multiple winners going to be picked and all that, so feel free to check that out. And like I said, I can't remember what my third announcement is. <laughs> my, my Nana, my very British Nana, says that she has a memory like a sieve some days, and you know I feel that. I am only 24 years old and I feel that, y'all. Oh, I mean, I'm fixing to be 25, that's a scary thought. Anyway, let's talk about my tier ranking chart. I changed it up just a little bit, I tweaked the colors just a little bit. It's basically the same one from my KU video if you've seen that one. If you have not, please feel free to check it out. Enjoyed that video so much. Now, for this... <laughs> okay, so I tweaked the colors. I made this in Canva, by the way. I didn't really care for the uh, official tier ranking website layout. I don't like the black. It does not match my aesthetic at all. The colors are very... Uh, yeah, it's just not my thing. If you like it, that's totally fine. But I like pastels and I like pinks and purples and blues and just pastels in general. So we're going with that color scheme. If you have seen my room in any of my videos, if you're looking behind me, you will notice I have a lot of pink in my room and I love that. So introducing our categories, our our ranks, I guess you could say. Favorites. Can and will fangirl about. Do not get me started on them basically. I will just talk your ear off about them and well, yes, I will. I will. Really enjoyed, straight to the point. I really enjoyed it. Probably a four star read. Liked, I liked it. I don't know what else to say. Three, three and a half stars, typically. I treated it like a movie and I binged it in one setting. We're gonna see this probably with a lot of Kindle Unlimited books because that is kind of 
what I use, I don't really watch a lot of movies or TV shows. I read Kindle Unlimited books, and that's typically what that is. Meh slash average, it's just not bad, not great. I was waiting for you to impress me and you didn't. Kind of thing, it's not really, it was meh, you know, average, probably two, two and a half. Fun premise, but I didn't like something about it. And this is typically gonna be content, there might be some like, a character did something really stupid and it was just like ridiculous or like there was a third act breakup or whatever but it's typically going to be because of content because I like my rom-coms squeakier cleaner than a lot of rom-coms that are out there even in the clean fiction side and I've discussed that but yeah well we're gonna have quite a few in that category probably and then didn't meet my expectations crying emoji because Canva does not let me do a crying emoji so this picture the crying emoji is there it just didn't meet my expectations and unfortunately we have quite a few for that category. I can already tell you right off the bat. And then DNF, I actually only have one technically and then didn't like, I just put those together. Let's begin. Camping Adventure by Olivia Jarsmish. I gave, I don't think I'm saying the author's last name right, I'm so sorry. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. This is a Christian fiction middle grade series book three. Lessons have to be learned in middle grade books. You know, that's just how it works and our main girl learns lessons in this one. There you go. Four stars. Double Take by Lynette Eason. I also gave four stars. These were my first two books of the year and that's great that I started it off with four stars. Again, this is going to go in the really light category, but this is a Christian fiction suspense book that is not super creepy. So if you do not like creepy suspense books or ones that really don't have to do with serial killers, this one may interest you. I really enjoyed it. I'm definitely looking forward. Book two is coming out in August and I'm really looking forward to it. Wishes by Brittany Eden. This is a clean fiction novella and it's kind of a retelling of Cinderella, but it's it's different. Like it's not your typical retelling. I'll be honest that I did get lost a lot, but I really liked the idea and the world. It was kind of steampunkish historical, but almost modern. I'm not quite sure how to explain this book. I, I sincerely do not know how to explain this book. It was different. The main girl was a reporter that was basically told to get the scoop that the crown prince isn't actually the crown prince and drama entails because they have a past. So yeah, you know, it was really fun. I liked it. Georgiana's Secret by Arlem Hawks. This book surprised me. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. This is a clean fiction regency book and this is basically about a girl who is Let's see, how can I say this? Her dad is a captain of something in the Navy and she is posing as like a, I can't think of it, a cabin boy, if you will. I think that was the term they used or that was the title. And her dad knows about it because they're trying to protect her from family members that are just a piece of work and terrible. So she is just, you know, posing as this young boy. And here comes our new first captain who is like, oh my goodness, this boy keeps getting picked on. I'm gonna take him under his wing. It was cute. It was really, really cute. I enjoyed that one. That I never knew I could like a book that was basically fully set on the ship. I don't do water or boats or anything like that. And like, that's not a buzzword. I wouldn't say it's an anti-buzzword, but it doesn't make me inclined to read it. But I did really, really enjoy that book. The Golden Goal by Anna Conwell. This was so disappointing to me. I decided not to rate it. But basically, this is a clean fiction hockey romance book. There's a lot of clean fiction hockey romance books out there and I keep reading them because I like the sports romance, but sometimes I have no interest in hockey number one, but then sometimes the romance is just too much for me and that was definitely the case with this one. Their kissing just was way too much. I did not care for the characters. They were supposed to be professionals in their fields, but they did not feel professional. They felt like they should have been in high school. And like she was their PT and of this hockey team and it was just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care for it. There was just a lot of things that I was just like, <laughs> about. Let me adjust this real quick. I feel like I'm cutting it off. There, okay, that's better. The Divine Proverb of Streusel. Strizzle. I always struggle with that word by Sarah Brownsfold. I gave three and a half stars. This is the author that wrote The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip, which I really, really enjoyed. And this one it wasn't quite the same to me. Like I liked a lot of elements of it, but it didn't quite have the same impact to me as The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kip did. 
But I did like it. I gave it three and a half stars. I'm going to put it in the like category. It's basically about a girl whose parents have set a young woman, I should say, whose parents have suddenly divorced and she is just reeling from that. And she basically goes off to her father's... I think it was his mom's house. I'm trying to remember. I read that one back in January. And <laughs> that was so long ago. That was all three, four months ago. But basically, she, run, she kind of runs off and goes to her paternal side's house and finds a grandmother's recipe book and makes all her recipes and just feels connected to her and all that kind of thing. It was very sweet. It could be triggering or healing to those whose lives have been affected by divorce. But I did think it was overall a sweet book. Good faith content. On Wings of Ash and Dust by Brittany Wang. I gave this one like three stars. I think there was like one or two usages of minor language or mild. Let me rephrase that. Mild language. And basically I would think if you grew up on Pixie Hollow, like the game, the world, the movies, all of that, you may also really enjoy this one. This is a clean fantasy book that has to do with fairies and basically this girl is the heir to her fan well not she's not the heir her twin brother is but then things happen and she's got to go back after basically living as a pirate if you liked the tinkerbell and the lost treasure movie you probably would enjoy this one i thought it was very interesting the second book is not out yet i i thought it was a completed series so i binged it like a movie and read it in one sitting but yeah i have to wait for that have to wait for it which is the second book i have to wait for which is kind of a bummer but it was very interesting the Unlucky Prince by Deborah Grace White. I gave, I'm still kind of torn on this, like three and a half, four stars. It's just a fairy tale retelling of the Frog Prince, but it was really like focused on the prince's side of the story. And I always thought that was really neat. There was a series of this. I have not read all of them yet. I only have one more so far that I've read, but I would like to attempt some of the other ones. I just have to be in the mood for a fairy tale retelling, you know? But this one was different. It was fun. I don't really know how much to say about the fairy tale retelling. I liked the main characters. Um, I liked them. Yeah. The Golden Prince by Alice and Vaya. I have that I gave this one three stars. I'm questioning if that is accurate because I did not like the main girl. This was a retelling of Rapunzel. The main guy was pretty good, but I did not care for her. So I'm going to put it in the fun premise, but I didn't like something about it because I did not like the main girl. I don't... Did I really give it three stars? Hmm. I like the author's writing style. I've read another series by this author and she really sucks you in. do think I like this author's writing style, but I just didn't necessarily care for the main girl in that book. The Disappearing Stranger by Lois Walford Johnson. This is a very classic Christian middle grade series. This is book one. Okay, y'all, I'm going to put it, I have no, I have no uh, nostalgic ties to the series. So to me, it's meh. I'm so sorry. It's average. It's meh. I don't know what else to tell y'all. Like, the main girl, there's a lot of name calling between these new, this new uh, blended family with the step siblings. Didn't really care for the disappearing stranger. I am going to continue on with the series as I find the books. But they're not really a high priority for me. I don't, I don't, I haven't cared for them really. Listening to the Rain by Miriam Thor. This is a contemporary-ish, I think it's set like 10 years in the past of current day, about a girl who lives with her two cousins and their grandfather. And something happens very traumatic in their family where one of them is hurt and it really just shakes everything but I really loved the family message of it the faith content it was I would consider it a hidden gem in the Christian YA market but I gave it three and a half stars so honestly it's right in between that really enjoyed and liked I'm gonna put it under like because of three and a half I'm gonna put it once a Queen by Sarah Author. This book was a miss for me. I gave it two stars. I'd be really curious for those who like Narnia if you like this book or would you feel like this is like a knockoff Narnia? I'm not sure how you would feel about it. I personally did not care for it. 
the fantasy world. It's a portal fantasy too, which I have learned. I can do almost every fantasy now in the clean side, but portal fantasies do not make sense in my head. They just don't. So I'm going to say that this one didn't meet my expectations because it didn't. And that was very much a bummer. It was very much a bummer. Okay, my one DNF is The Breakup Project by Carolyn Miller. I DNF'd this one. I could not stand the main girl. I only got a couple chapters in and all she was doing was commenting on her weight and another girl's weight and just being a snooty, just stinker. I did not like her. I was not going to finish the book. I was not. No. Oh, I thought of the third thing I think I was going to share in this video for third little kind of announcement is that all of these books, except the last handful, I have talked about in recent reads, so I'm going to link those recent reads down below. And if you'd like to see any of the reviews, like the full content reviews or just main content reviews of these books, please click on those recent reads that it's mentioned and those will be in that description because I don't think I can link all 50 because of space constraints in my description. I hit, I hit that pretty often actually, like my limit, my character limit in my description. I hit that pretty often, so I think the best way will be if I link my recent reads where I discussed these books. It will be three different recent reads, and then again, the last handful I'll be discussing in an upcoming recent reads that will probably come out in two to three videos out, maybe two to three weeks out, roughly. So yes, that was my third one. Yay, my brain remembered it in the middle of filming this. Let's continue. Ah, Tracking a Killer by Elizabeth Goddard. Okay. I've ranted about this book. This is a love inspired suspense book and look at that cute beagle on the cover. That is why I picked up this book. How often was this dog in this book? Not often. Like, it was a bummer. The main girl was just, oh, the main girl was something else. She was something else. It was a second chance, but like misunderstandings and she is like the prime target for the serial killer they are after and she won't go into hiding because how dare you not let her prove herself and yada yada yada. I was losing my mind. The dog should have just been the star of the show. I did not like this book. It was so unfortunate. First in My Heart by Rachel Blanchard. I gave this one three and a half, four stars. I did really like it. I have to admit, I'm not a fan of this cover. I'm not a fan of this cover, I will admit that. But this is a contemporary romance Christian fiction book and it's just very sweet, very different. It was on the shorter side. I feel like it was a about 200 pages. I might be remembering that wrong, but it was really sweet. The main girl has moved to a whole new state, whole new city, obviously, and she is trying to get a teaching job that doesn't work out, and she gets involved in the church, and she meets this other guy who's kind of a grump, but he also just, like, is, I almost think, very introverted as well, and they don't hit it off at first, but then he keeps thinking about her, and it was just, it was cute. You know, it was cute. I don't want to give too much info it's just a cute contemporary rom-com. Um, hmm. It's honestly right on the cusp between the really enjoyed and the liked. I'm going to put it under liked. The Secrets Beneath by Kimberly Woodhouse. <sighs> this was an unfortunate one that did not meet my expectations. This is a historical book about a girl who basically does fossil hunting. And that would have been interesting in itself. It's a second chance with her and the main guy. He is trying to study to be a doctor. He's come back to the town where they grew up and, you know, sparks are reflying and all that, kindling, whatever. And then we've got this other guy who added a lot of content to the story. And I was just really disappointed and honestly a little disheartened by this book. Like, yes, there was decent faith content, but it also was just, like, sad because there was murders, including of a young girl, just referenced often. And it, yeah, it was, I was really bummed about this one. I'm not gonna lie. I was bummed. I don't think I mentioned The Secrets Beneath by Kimberly Woodhouse. That one was Christian fiction. This next one is also Christian fiction, and that is The Lost King's Daughter by A.D. German. This is kind of a non-magical fantasy, I guess you could say, historical kind of medieval time period. Kind of similar to Melanie Dickerson, but this book was much longer. I gave it three stars. I liked it. I'd be curious to see how the rest of the series continues. It is slower paced, so don't go in expecting a ton of action in my opinion, but it's basically about this girl who has this cross pendant and she's always been told never to let anyone see it because it's gold and they'll think she stole it and that kind of thing. 
and it turns out that necklace, that pendant, has a very complicated history and so she's kind of whisked away to one kingdom while another kingdom is trying to find her as well. Lots of different things is, uh, um, assure, assume, assume, no. What's the phrase? I don't know. I don't know the phrase I mean, but basically a lot of the things ensue. Ensue! That's it. That's it. Ensue. I liked this one. I thought it was fun. I would be very curious to see the rest of the series. The Irish Matchmaker by Jennifer Dibill. I gave this one two stars and I'm trying to remember exactly why. I know the kissing got to be a bit much. I'm gonna have to look this one up. Just a moment. I often get asked, like, Lindsay, how do you remember all the books you've read? I don't. I don't. I honestly go and look at my own reviews more than I think anyone else does. <laughs> I sincerely think I look at my own reviews more than anyone else. Okay, yeah, this was one of those books I had really mixed feelings on. It started out really cute, but started getting a bit too noticing on his muscles and kissing and just past what I want to recommend for books for Christian girls ages of like 9 to 19. Uh, yeah, it was just... Um, um, there was another guy in here too that was just like a player and a jerk and he was just, he added in comments that I was like, excuse you? It was just, yeah. It, it had a, it was a very easy to read story, but because of content, I did mark it down. I'm going to put this as, it didn't meet my expectations. Even though it could technically fit under a fun premise. I'm going to put it there. The next book would be A Goose Girl by K.M. Shia. This is a clean fairy tale retelling of, you guessed it, The Goose Girl. And I don't know if I like the story of The Goose Girl. I don't think I've ever read the official one, or if I did, I probably DNF'd it. But, you know, it wasn't bad, but it was very, um, kind of run-of-the-mill, I guess you could say. If things wrapped up a little too easy. I mean, it's a short novella about a fairy tale retelling. What did I expect? You shouldn't expect greatness, necessarily. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. The next book I read was Lady of Disguise by Melanie Dickerson. Now, I liked this one more than some of the other books in the series, but the series has been kind of misses for me because it's a lot of insta-love, quite a bit of kissing in the later books that I just don't think are the best for pre-teens. And this is a fairy tale retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, so you feel like it should be okay for pre-teens. It has a moral dilemma to it for me, and I don't know. I liked elements of this one, but I also didn't care for quite a few elements in this one as well. <sighs> I, I don't want to say I had high expectations because this series I do not have high expectations for. Mm. Where would I put this one? I gave it two stars. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't fantastic. I'm going to put it there. Oh, do I want to put it there? I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it there. Moving on into happiness. Hey Jude Carpenter by Storm Stoltz. I gave four and a half stars. I really, really enjoyed this one. This was a brand new contemporary Christian YA book. This was adorable. It had the Romeo and Juliet kind of vibes. and this, But instead of like competing fan Or not competing. What are they in Romeo and Juliet? Just families that don't... What's the phrase? Rivals? They're not rivals. I can't think of the word. That's fine. I can't think of a lot of words in this video already. We're doing swell over here. But basically their families don't get along, but it's really based off of a church split and drama that ensued there. And our main two cuties are like, oh, they get off on the wrong foot first. And then they become friends and then they try to introduce each other to each other's families and it doesn't go well because of the last names. And I just thought it was really cute. Yes, there is some romance and I do think that they were a little young to share a kiss, but the epilogue was adorable. I still have not gotten my physical copy of this book yet. I've been debating if I'm going to do a really big book order. I should not. I know I should not. But that book will be in it whenever I do it. So, we're putting that in the favorites. I just love a good contemporary Christian YA book, and that just, it met my expectations beautifully. Dust by Kara Swanson. I gave this one three stars. This is, without a doubt, one of the most popular, well, I 
feel like it's one of the most popular Christian YA books, and I've been meaning to read it since it came out. It is not necessarily Peter Pan, a retelling of Peter Pan. It's kind of more of an inspiration, and Peter is an actual character in this book, and he has had to leave Neverland because a lot of stuff is happening, and he's had to go to England, and he's growing up. Meanwhile, you've got our main girl, and was her name Claire? I think her name was Claire, maybe. That's sticking out in my brain. I feel like, I think I've had a couple Claire's already this year and that's kind of weird. And out of 50 books, I mean, I guess that's not the best odds, but I feel like that's odd. Anyway, she is looking for her twin brother who she thinks Peter Pan possibly kidnapped. And meanwhile, she's got a skin condition that is actually pixie dusk. There is way more to her story than is told. And you know, I was enjoying this book until that last chapter. A lot of people say this series is dark, this duology is dark, and you know that last chapter gave me a taste of it. I was like, okay, yeah, I can see. I can see how people would say, yeah, this is on the darker side throughout it, but then that last chapter, I was like, oh, now we're talking torture and murder and like, ooh, like, yeah, I can read a book about a serial killer and it doesn't bother me. Well, like, it bothers me, but like, you know, it's a different kind of bother, right? But like this, it was like, ooh. Ooh. And that really gives you a taste for the second book, which I have heard is very dark. And a lot of people have said depressing. Some people really like it. I feel like I'm going to lean more to the side of this series isn't going to be for me. Like, I liked aspects of it, but I will say it didn't meet my expectations, which was sad. I don't know. I'm going to read that second book at some point here this month, I hope. And I'm just, I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous about it because that's going to, number one, that review is going to take a while because Dust took so many hours, oh my goodness, to write the review of that one because of all the content. But, yeah, I, want, I mean, I want to know what happens, but also at the same time, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> the Steadfast Heart by Arlem Hawks. This was my second Arlem Hawks book I read because I read Georgiana's Secret and really enjoyed that one. And then this was a retelling of The Steadfast Tinge Soldier, which I had never heard about. So I used this for the Once Upon a February readathon that was happening in February. And I really enjoyed this one. This one was just really sweet. They This is a series of like six books that are retellings of fairy tales in the Regency time period. And that's just right up my alley in all reality. It just is. I really enjoyed that one. It was really cute. Oh, hello, my love. The Mysterious Phoenix Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. This was, oh man, how many times have I read this book? I don't feel like it's right on Goodreads. I feel like I've read it seven or eight times maybe. I'm not sure. This I actually listened to as an audiobook for the first time while I did some gardening. And I have list I've read this book so many times that as I was listening to it, I would be quoting along with him. Like it was great. The my book pages on my wall is from The Mysterious Bank Society, the first book. I adore this book. I love this series. This series has my heart. This first book sincerely, I believe, shaped me and my critical thinking skills and how I am now as an adult, I sincerely feel like it had such an impact on me. I love this series just so much. So yeah, that's that's so easy to put up there. Like no hesitation. Fatal Witness by Patricia Bradley. I gave three stars. This is book two in a series. The first book came out last year and I liked that one okay, but I liked this one more. This has to do with a kind of amnesia trope almost. Like she doesn't remember what happened in her childhood due to a very traumatic event. There's this grandmother lady who is looking for her long lost granddaughter and then here is a law enforcement officer who is trying to help the grandmother and things are getting a little like what's going on here. Things happen, there was murder. You know, I overall enjoyed this one. I'm curious about the rest of the series. I think I would have liked it more had we not had the perspective though of the main girl from the first book because she was okay but I didn't necessarily care for her a lot. So I'm going to put that one under liked. A Lonely Dance by Selena R. Gonzalez. I read this as a buddy read with Sarah over at Sarah's Tangled Tales and Sweet Celestria over at Celestria with Bookish Rambolines. And you know. I wasn't sure about this book. I ended up giving it three and a half, four stars, but this is a retelling on the 12 Dancing Princesses. And on the first book was a retelling of the, 
the end the beast which i really i was shocked by how much i enjoyed that book that was really enjoyable but this book the main guy in this book was the villain from that book and I, like okay well te the villain's son but the villain in his own right and i was just like i want to toss this guy out of the window like mm, mm, i don't want to but sarah promised me that there was a redemption story and she was right I'll admit it you were right sarah it was yeah there was a redemption story for him which was good because he desperately needed it and you could see like what an impact his father's just cruelness did to him so it makes sense on why he is the way he is but he was all oh, he was terrible in that first book oh my goodness i didn't like him and he's he still has a chip on his shoulder in this book until he gets to be the hero for someone else and the main girl is neat i really liked that the author really created the, the main girl in this is a princess. She's the heir to the throne of this one kingdom. And how the author created this whole other culture. And like you can tell, okay, this is inspired by this. And this is inspired by this country. But I just really liked how she combined it all. And it just felt so fleshed out. That sounds weird. But like you hear that in the book world. When like something is really thought through well. And like that kind of thing. That's how I felt about this book. Particularly because... One little detail I really liked about this book that I just want to fangirl about real quick is that instead of like engagement rings, they have engagement cuffs like for their ear. And I just thought that was so cute because the main guy is supposed to, well not the main guy, the, a guy is supposed to do this for the girl as like an engagement present when he proposes. I was just like, oh, that's cute. I just, you know, little things like that. I was like, that's really different. That's really sweet. It had a lot of parts. I really liked it. The villain in that in this book though like the actual villain not our reformed villain the actual villain was so annoying he was so annoying and that kind of thing but i did end up really liking this book i think i liked the first book better though but now i can continue on with the series which i was hoping i would have already done that by now this far in the year but i haven't so there's always this month and hopefully next month Okay, this is probably my most disappointing book of the year so far, and that's The Lost Lieutenant by Erica Vetch, maybe is how you pronounce the author's last name. I'm not quite sure. She said it rhymes with wrench, like Amazing Grace saved a wrench like me, but wrench, wrench, wrench has an R, but her last name doesn't have an R. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, this is book one in a series, and it's a Regency series. I was so sad. I gave this one like one and a half stars because half I liked the characters, but one because I did not care for the content. It is a marriage of convenience trope, which is without a doubt <laughs> my least favorite trope. I don't like it. It adds in unnecessarily unnecessary sexual content and that kind of thing. And also just in this book, the main girl's father, oh, awful, horrible, terrible human being. like fictional character I'm aware but my anger was real because he was just terrible and then her brother also horrible like the poor girl thankfully all that skipped her genetically because oh they were a piece of work and then the guy um the the brother had a friend and the friend was an absolute creep everybody was like despicable except our main couple and like two other people that is it everyone else was despicable and they just made me really mad and then we have the marital content because they're kind of forced to get together because of circumstances and whatnot. No, not scandalous, but like the prince regent, or princey as they would call him, he was like, oh, you two could get together. And you can't say no to him for some reason. And that was like a big thing they kept talking about in the book. It's like, we can't say no to him. I guess we're getting married. And it's just like, oh my goodness, you're letting this guy rule your life. Okay. Another time, another time. That one was really disappointing, though. That was so sad. I will be continuing on with the series. I'm probably going to read book two here shortly, but I do not have high hopes, which is so unfortunate because I had such good hopes for this series, but all three of them are marriage of convenience. So when some people might be watching this video going, oh, I love that trope. You're weird. I'm sorry. No, that was mean. But I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's just, um, I honestly, has there, do I even have a single book on my shelves? that have a marriage and convenience trope. I'd have to think about that, but I'm gonna go with no. Probably not, because that adds in a lot of the sexual tension and emotions and content, and I just don't care for that. I just don't care for that. So, moving on. 
The Hidden Message by Lois Gladys Walford. This was book two in that one. Uh, the Disappearing Stranger was book one. What is this? Adventures of the Northwoods series. I'm not impressed. I'm so sorry. I'm just not been impressed with this series, but I was a Mandy girly. So I don't know if I really will be impressed by the series. They they have very, um, very similar, but also very different. Like, I'm more willing to overlook Mandy's flaws in that series because I really enjoyed that series when I was younger. Or, really, I, w I didn't read it within the target age. I was probably 13, 14 when I read it, but I still really enjoyed that one. Th this series has a lot of name calling and sibling bickering. And then this book, the main girl was just a stinker. And I don't know. I just didn't care for it. So, moving on. Never Fall Again by Lynn H. Blackburn. This is book one in the Gossamer Falls. I just like saying Gossamer. I just like saying that word, so I'm going to say it every chance I get. But I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed this. This is a new suspense, Christian fiction suspense book. I am doing very well telling y'all the genres. I've been trying to. I was doing better at the beginning, but I've been failing. Um, the Lost Lieutenant was Christian fiction. Had terrible characters, though. And then The Hidden Message was Christian fiction. Fatal Witness was Christian fiction. A Lonely Dance was just clean fantasy fairy tale-ish. Mysterious Mix Society was secular middle grade. Okay, there's my catch-up. So, Never Fall Again by Lynn H. Blackburn. This took me by surprise. This is technically romantic suspense, but it's like 15% suspense. And what does that leave us? 85 per Is that right? Yes. Okay, I can't do math right now. That was basic math, Lindsay. 85% romance. It was really cute. I enjoyed a lot of elements of it. It was cute, you know, I liked a lot of different things. I'm curious how the rest of the series will go. I really like that it had like the found family trope and then she's a single mom just trying to keep her life together and keep people out of her life so she can keep custody of her daughter. She's been through some things. It was just, you know, it was really sweet but the main thing I really, really enjoyed seeing was that after a suspense moment and I talked about this on my last recent reads and kind of swooned and then I also talked about it in my book buzzwords video that I filmed a bit ago because I completely swooned over the fact that after a suspense moment, a suspenseful moment, the main guy asks if he can pray for her and then does. Yes, that was adorable. That was lovely. I love it. I love it. So that definitely made the book better for me, but I did really still enjoy it overall. The Mysterious Phoenix Society and the Perilous Journey by Trenton Lee Stewart. I gave this one 4.75 stars. Oh, I don't think I said I gave the first MBS Mysterious Phoenix Society book five stars. Five big, beautiful, glorious five stars. This one is 4.75. I just like the series. You know, this is a childhood favorite to me. I actually enjoyed this book, I think, the most out of all my read-throughs. Like, all the times I've read this book, I enjoyed this read-through this time the most. It, did that make any sense? I don't feel like that was grammatically proper at all. But I also listened to this one as an audiobook when I was gardening. I did a lot of gardening in the last month or so. <laughs> I've done a lot of gardening. But this one was just lovely. Yeah. I would say that's probably now my second favorite in the series overall. Beauty and the Baron by Joanna Barker. This is part of that Regency fairy tale series I was telling y'all about earlier with the Steadfast Ten Soldier. Soldier? I, I struggle with that word. But this one was a retelling of, you guessed it, The Beauty and the Beast. I really liked this one. Honestly, I don't really want to say too much about that one. It's just Beauty and the Beast, but he's not a beast. He's just a grump. And he's not a jerk, which is really nice. So, really enjoyed that one. Frozen Hearts by Kara E. Rugg. Rugg, I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's last name. I gave this one about three and a half stars. This is a retelling of the Snow Queen, but of a Christian fantasy side of it. And not really romance, it just had like a brother-sister bond kind of thing. And a family bond, which was really sweet. I don't really know what else to say about it besides that. I liked it. I'm going to put it in the liked category. While the City Sleeps by Elizabeth Camden. This is a new release Christian fiction book. I gave this one two stars. I was so bummed about this book. I did not care for the either really main character. The main girl was a dentist, which I've discussed. That's not really, I don't like reading about dentists. Like, I don't care what time period it is. It ain't my thing. And so she gets this 
kind of a, a hint, a tip, if you will, when one of her patients is under, is basically drugged, you know, with the dentist stuff, and not quite anesthesia, whatever it is, and she finds, like, clues and connections, and oh my goodness, there's going to be, like, bombings and terrorists and that kind of thing, and this is a historical time period, like, early 1900s, I think it was, and so she knows the main guy who is a police officer and he was honestly my big drawback of the book i did not care for him and it's not because he was a police officer the police officer parts in this time period was very fascinating and just seeing like how they would have handled bomb threats and how would the policemen how, how would they have gotten their news when they were out, you know, walking the streets and that kind of thing. All of that fa that history aspect was fascinating, but this book was such a miss for me because of the characters, how things were revealed, an event at the end that I do not care for. This was a disappointment. I was really bummed about that. Oh look, another disappointment. <laughs> That's not the main, but it's true. Just for the Summer by Melody Carlson. This is about two girls who basically swap lives for the summer. One of them runs this very upscale boutique hotel, and then one of them runs her grandfather's kind of hunting fishing lodge, and they swap. One of them does really good making the best of it. The other one, who is very shallow, uh, shallow official, <laughs> shallow and superficial, was just a piece of work, and honestly ruined the book for me. She just was not. She wasn't great. She wasn't great at. All. I gave it two and a half stars. I was really bummed about that. I had higher hopes for this one because I've read so many of Melanie Dick, uh, not Melanie, I'm so sorry, Melody Carlson's books before, but that book just wasn't it, unfortunately. My Lucky Charm by Courtney Walsh. I gave three-ish stars. The first book was My Phony Valentine, which I did enjoy, but had way too much kissing for my taste. This one had less of that, but there still was a few moments that I was like, okay, that could have been left out. Okay, we could we could have dropped that kiss just a little bit, but I did overall enjoy it. This is a clean fiction hockey romance book, as you can probably tell from the cover. And the main girl, it's really that sunshine grumpy trope. It had a lot of really cute moments. It did have some things I didn't care for, though, so I'm going to put it here and the fun premise but I didn't like something about it. There was just a couple little things that I was like, did we need that? Cinder Luna by Marie Soleil maybe is how you pronounce the author's last name. This is a contemporary retelling of Cinderella and it's basically also have that hide hidden identity trope which I really like that trope and this was overall really cute. I gave this one three and a half stars. Uh, let's see, what can I tell y'all about this? Uh, they meet online via video game, but they don't, he doesn't know that she's a girl. She's kept that a secret with all their, I guess years. I don't remember how long they were playing together, but they've played together a while. And they were really good friends. And then they happen to meet in person under their real names, but they don't know it. But they can't stop thinking of it. Okay, you know how it goes. I don't care. I liked it. It was cheesy. It was cute. But I liked it. The next book would be Celebrities Don't Date Bookworms, and I honestly have no idea where to put this one by Clara Nelson. This is basically a complete spoof, if you will, knockoff, if you will, of a, like, One Direction fanfic. And... It's, like, right in between meh and didn't like it. Like, I don't know why I finished it. Why did I finish it? I don't know. I gave it two stars. It was decently clean, couple little bits of mild language. They didn't make the best decisions, but they're teenagers. They had a couple moments of kissing too much, so yeah, we'll just put it there. I don't know. Hello again, my love. The Mysterious Phoenix Society and the Prisoner's Dilemma by Trent Lee Stewart. I gave this one four and a half stars. I've read this one five or six times as well. Also, the audiobook this time, though. And the, narr the narrator of these audiobooks just did them so well. I'm really disappointed that the fourth Mysterious Benedict Society book isn't by him. I don't know if I'm going to listen to the audiobook of that one or not. But enjoyed this one. This series just, I love this series. This is such a huge impact on my childhood. It really truly was. And it's just all the way through my life. It's just wonderful. Sign Me Up by Dulce Dameron is a clean rom-com book. And it had, it had parts, though, I did not care for, including some pretty heavy kissing and just different comments and the things that happened to her. 
like, it had cute moments, but it also had a lot of moments that I was just cringing and rolling my eyes and like secondhand embarrassment was real kind of thing. A lot of cute, it was a cute concept. It was a fun premise, but there was multiple things I didn't like about it. <sighs> the title of this one still makes me cringe. My Forbidden Billionaire by Kristen W. Joy. Single dad, rich single billionaire dad, school teacher, main girl. You can see what happens from a mile coming. <laughs> Four miles. It's clear visibility. Yeah, um, I'm going to put that one in the didn't like. I didn't care for that one. Like, I, I didn't rate it because there was a couple things. I was like, oh, that was really cute. But then there was a lot of things. I'm like, this is ridiculous. The Extraordinary Education of Nicholas Benedict by Trentley Stewart, I gave four and a half stars. I always would have said this book was my second out of all the Mysterious Bank Society books. This is the prequel of the main three plus one series. And I've always said this would be number two in my lineup, like the first Mysterious Bank Society book and then this one. But this time I feel like the second book, The Perilous Journey, that one got higher for me with this one. But again, I did the audiobook, really enjoyed it. The series has my heart. All of it. The whole heart. Easter Carrots by Aaron Mangum. I read on Resurrection Sunday this year and it was just so cute. This is a 57 page novella, so some people are going to argue, should you even put novellas that short on your Goodreads reading challenge? I really love this author. This is one of my all-time favorite authors, so I'm going to. You don't have to if you don't want to. However, 57 pages, you read 57 pages. It counts in my book. My book, haha. <laughs> but this is just adorable. It's got that kind of enemy, a little bit of that enemies to more, a little bit of the matchmaking, the he falls first. It's cute. It's just really cute. I, yeah. Oh, I would love to see that as a full-length book. I love I, just any of this author's books I adore, but that one was so cute. I read that one on the way to church that morning, and it was just like, I already was like, I love springtime and the Resurrection Sunday. I, that's probably my favorite holiday in all reality. But just like walking into church after finishing that cute rom-com, it was just, ah! It was great. Like, high adrenaline. I was very, I was smileier, I think, than normal. <laughs> Ooh, Operation Happy by Janielle Walsh. This is... Uh, I honestly don't know if the publisher is marketing this as Christian fiction. It is middle grade, and there are elements of faith content, but God's name is taken in vain. And if you look at it from a secular middle grade side, it's like, okay, yeah, that's not shocking. But this was published by Zonder Kids, which is owned by Zondervan, which, yes, was bought out by HarperCollins, a very secular publisher, years ago. But, if we're promoting this as Christian fiction, God's name should not be taken in vain. And now my Jew was by an adult, but still. Still. And it's really disappointing because I adore this cover. I think this cover is just... Well, okay, I wouldn't say it's perfect for the book. It makes it look a little bit happier than I feel like this book is because it is dealing with Pearl Harbor and our main girl is I think 12 if I remember right and her family has recently moved to Pearl Harbor then the bombings happened for World War II and so it was hard to read about at times especially because you're reading about this incredibly important and traumatic time in history through a middle grader's eyes so it had another level but honestly it was incredibly disappointing to me that God's name was taken in vain. So I'm gonna, I hate to put it under fun premise because it wasn't fun. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't fun. In the general sense, reading about war is not fun. But her and her dog were very sweet. So like, cute premise on a lot of aspects. But things here and there I didn't care for, especially God's name being taken in vain. Which I have confirmed in the final edition of the book, which is incredibly disappointing. How to Kiss a Movie Star by Jenny Proctor. I ended up not rating this book because the kissing went past what I'm comfortable with, but I did think a lot of elements of this clean rom-com was really cute. She is like a nerdy science girl. He is a movie star that's coming back to the hometown to just try and get away from everything, of course, but she knows there are white squirrels on the property. 
he owns. And so she's sneaking on his property. And you know, misunderstandings. Then we lead into the fake dating. And I like a good fake dating trope. I really truly do. So there was a lot of things I liked about this book. But the kissing was just a bit too much. So we're going to put it again under the fun premise. But there was something. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodges Burnett. I put in this edition of this book and it's kind of lopsided so sorry about that y'all. This is the, um, I actually own this edition. I think it's a Barnes & Noble edition. I'm not sure. It's on that shelf over there. And I listened to this one as an audiobook. I can't remember the narrator. I think it was Josephine Bailey, I think was the narrator's name. And I thought she did really good. I'm not sure if like the Yorkshire accents were completely accurate or not, but I have enjoyed it nonetheless. I have not read this book since I was like in middle school. So it was really interesting how much I remembered of it and what I didn't remember of it. The funny thing is though, I don't think I've seen the movies of these at all. Like there's multiple movie versions and shows of this, but I don't think I've ever seen those. So I may have to still check those out. But yeah, I mean, I liked it. There's definitely things that wouldn't probably fly in today's world. Certain things she says and that she's kind of a brat and like just different words, you know. It's a it's a historical book. It was written a long time ago, over a hundred years ago. And that's just how it was then. So there is that that some people would be uncomfortable with. I can look at it as that's part of history. So there's that. Um three and a half, four stars, I'll put it under the really enjoyed because it was kind of nostalgic in a way to me. So we'll put it there. So now moving on from The Secret Garden to these next few handful of books. I have not discussed these in the recent reads yet. So I'm going to try to give y'all maybe a touch more about it, but not too much about it because I don't want to, you know, spoil my next recent reads. But those will be discussed in the next video. So, well, not the next, ne probably the next, next, next video. Oh, recent reads number four. That's where The Secret Garden and now on will be discussed. But the next book would be The Songbird of Hope Hill by Kim Vogel Sawyer. I was really nervous about this book because the main girl had just gotten out of like the the brothel house of ill repute setting and I was kind of nervous about the content for this book but I've read multiple books by this author and I just truly enjoy her faith content and that is truly the focus of this book was the faith content which was really nice. I will say it wasn't my favorite by this author. I gave it three stars. I liked parts of it. The content wise of the prostitution really didn't go into detail at all and it really only lasts like the first two chapters are set there at the place but like nothing necessarily happens but you have like comments and suggestions of what they have to do to survive which is just that's hard to read about you know especially like in this historical time period it was due to survival they had to do it to survive and that's just sad and my that just like oh makes me want to have a time machine and just like take gold with me back there and you know just like help people. But the faith content was really good in this book so I liked it but it wasn't a new favorite book by this author. Premedate, premed, no, mm. premedate, no, Pre how do I say this word? Oh no. Premedate, I have to look it up. Premeditate. Premeditate, hmm? Premeditate. Premeditated murder. Premeditated myrtle. Okay, that's not going to be fun for me to say in this next recent reads. Oh boy. This is a clean, secular, middle grade series. It's set right at, oh man, I think it was like 1893. And this is basically about a young girl named Myrtle. And her mother was a medical scientist. Her father is now a prosecutor. And the girl is fascinated with murder and crimes and that kind of thing. And you might be a little like concerned for her, which makes sense. But she honestly reminded me of Nancy Drew in a lot of ways of just her curiosity and trying to find things out. But I would say she's, it's middle grade. So it's not like Nancy Drew. They, they just had a similar vibe to them, but not quite like different. I really liked Myrtle though. I have to say I thought she was very entertaining. I liked a lot of different aspects of it. The ending took me by surprise, which that is really rare for a book to take me by surprise. I can I typically figure out the answers of books very quickly. 
but I really enjoyed this one. I actually listened to it mainly as an audiobook while I was gardening, and then I actually went back and read it physically, like a quick read through, and I enjoyed it. You know, I thought it was really interesting. I definitely will be continuing on with the series. I'm not sure if it, there's more than five books of this series or not. I haven't found any news about the sixth one, so I'm not sure if the series is done or not. But I did like a lot of aspects of it. I will say I'm not a fan of the illustrations on the covers of these books, but I was I I did really like this book. I was kind of shocked by how much I enjoyed it and got into it. Because typically when I listen to audiobooks, I try to just listen to books I've already listened to before in case like I get distracted, you know, doing whatever I'm doing. But this one, I was able to keep a good focus on it, and I enjoyed it. And the narrator also did the British accent, so it was it was neat. I I liked this one. I really did like this one. I would I would put it in the really enjoyed. The Elusive Truth of Lily Temple by Joanna Davidson Politano is a new release Christian fiction book. I liked this one. I did like this one. I gave this one four stars. This one, like all the author's other books, I feel like I do have a, a bit of the time at the beginning where I'm like, well, what is happening? And I'm trying to like scramble and pick up all the pieces. And I think that's truly because the first chapter of, I feel like it's all of her books, maybe at least most of them, the last few for sure. The first chapter is set towards the end of the book. And it basically like, then it's like a, her recapping and telling the story. So like the main girl's perspective is in first person. And then the main guy's perspective is typically in third person. And then you may have a couple other people's point of views that are in third person. It's just different, right? So it kind of takes your brain, at least for me, it, it kind of taxes my brain, but in a good way where it's like getting a workout that it doesn't typically get when I read. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how tired I am at the moment. But I did enjoy this one. This is basically following Lily Temple, who is a silent film actress, which that aspect was really cool. I've always been, you know, fascinated with old photography and then seeing about the old cinema photography was just very fascinating, hearing about all that through this book. And I, I of course, I did research bunny trails after I read it. I really liked that one. But then there's like this fairy tale-ish aspect of this book as well because our main girl really enjoys that and just kind of believes in those. And then there's this special necklace gemstone, the sapphire, that people are trying to find. And you know, it was really interesting. I will say though, I completely predicted the ending and I was kind of bummed on that. Like I, nothing shocked me about this book, which is weird because typically her books take me by surprise. She's one of the few authors that was like, oh, wow. Didn't see that coming, but or at least I didn't see all of it coming, but this one I did see everything coming, which I was a little disappointed about. But I mean, I still really enjoyed it. I still really enjoyed it. Four stars, but yeah. This cover is beautiful, by the way. I just have to say that cover's beautiful. <laughs> okay, this was just a random book I recently picked up, uh, yesterday actually, and that, or the day before. Uh, Nobody's Hero by Janine, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's last names, and I'm a little scared to try because I feel like I am not going to say it right, like 99.9% .9 sure I'm not going to say it right, so I'm not going to try. But this is basically a girl who is working as a superhero or supervillain publicist, so basically she does the PR for supervillains and trying to handle that, and it's a very dangerous job to say the least. And for some reason, I like superhero books. I don't know why. I've never really been into like the Marvel world or anything like that. But superhero books, for some reason, fascinate me. And so I thought this one was really interesting. But basically, she meets this one guy and they've known each other back when they were younger. And things happen and an adventure happens. And I don't really want to tell you too much. It's only like 200 pages. So it was a pretty short read. There was more language though than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be a little squeakier <laughs> than I was expecting, but there is a decent amount of mild language used, which was disappointing. So I ended up giving it two and a half stars because of that. If I had done it for BFCG, I, I wouldn't have recommended it. And I wouldn't recommend it for those who want really squeaky reads. If you're okay with just brushing through the language, you may be interested in it, but there is that. There though also was faith content, like Christian faith content, which was really interesting. But I still wouldn't classify this book as Christian fiction. I would still put it more on the clean fiction side with mild language. I'm gonna put it under the fun premise, but I didn't like some things about it. 
And then, whew, we're almost done, y'all. My last book that I just finished in the wee hours this morning at like 5.20 a.m. Uh, there was a thunderstorm, y'all. I couldn't sleep. So I just stayed up reading this book and it made it lovely. And that was Drake Hall by Christina Bayer. This is just so much fun. Okay, so book one was Warm with Abby, which I have talked about before. This is set in like 1899, 1900, about a girl named Edith. She's like 21, 22. And she has recently been, well, in this book, she's been living at her extended family's estate. And there are secrets at this estate, y'all, okay? Legit secrets. A lot of secrets, actually. We find out more secrets in this book. And there has to do with dragons and wy wyverns. I think I said that right. And all of that things. And she's basically now become like the keeper of dragons and things are happening. And it was really good. But what really just I like about this author's books, these two books thus far, is her writing style is just so lovely. It's just there's something about it that's just like, oh, yes, that just tickles my brain in just the right way. You know, it was just excellent. I gave it four stars. Very easy four stars. I need to buy my physical copy so I can have it on my shelves with my other clean fantasy books. I would put this as like a clean, cozy, historical fantasy. If I can like do that many like little titles of the genre, I would put it there. I like it. Like it's very cozy. It's just lovely. It's so much fun. I really just like the vocabulary this author has in her books. In book one, I feel like had m way more examples of like the, um, the writing style of, but this book had a lot of vocabulary that I'm highlighting in my Kindle edition going, okay, what's this word mean? Oh, that's a perfect word for what she means. I had that multiple times happen, but it was just really good. I really enjoyed it. Book three is releasing next week. Actually, I, I think it's next week. I'm pretty sure it's next week. So I'm going to try to read that one way sooner because this one released back in January, I think. Pretty sure it was January. And I'm just now getting to it, which is a cry and shame because I really enjoyed it. But but it really sets up for book three, and I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in book three. So I'm going to put that at really enjoyed. Woohoo! We're done! Look at that list. Look at that list. You know, that doesn't look like 50 books. Does that look like 50 books to y'all? I used to be really good at, like, the guess how many M&Ms are in this jar game. I used to be great at those. But now I feel like I've lost that skill. Talent, if you will. But, yeah, there we go. 50 books plus one DNF. I did DNF another book, but it's a very soft DNF, and I'm going to be getting to that. I'm going back to it this month. I'm going to attempt to read it. Anyway, so not going to put that one on here because I am going to end up reading it, and I didn't want to put it on here when I know I'm going to attempt to read it again. So anyway, 50 plus one books right here. Whew. So there we go, my dear friends. Those were the first 50 books I've read so far in 2024. I'd love to know if you've read any of these. Do you want to read any of these? There's a lot of pretty good books on here. Like, honestly, those first three categories, go for it. Have fun. Those were enjoyable. It's always so fun to see, like on Goodreads particularly, just adding the books to your reading challenge and just seeing as they go. Like, as it just grows and grows and, like, seeing, like, the series come together and that kind of thing. I don't know. I just really like seeing how that works out on my own reading challenge. I don't really check other people's reading challenges, but when I look at mine and I was just like, ah, oh, look at it growing. Yay. And this actually, I had my goal set for 50. And so now I have the debate, am I going to go up to a hundred or am I going to just leave it as it is and just see what I can do? I'm not sure yet. Typically I just leave it, but I suppose I could push it up. Typically I do the 50 books closer to my birthday in June. So I am ahead of schedule here in April, but honestly I have been reading a lot of just like bingeable rom com -y books and like Kindle Unlimited books and just reading and then doing the audiobooks. That was fun. That was fun. I did what five, let's see, six. I did six audiobooks. And now this poses the very debated question. Do audiobooks count as reading? Because you're not actually reading. See, I knew that was a debate, and I was always like, not my monkeys, not my circus, because I don't listen to audiobooks, so I have no input on that, but I have now dipped my toes into the water, so now it is my monkeys and my circus. <laughs> that debate is not my problem. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Does it count? Do you count it? Uh, let me know. If you listen to audiobooks, do you count them on your Goodreads reading challenge? I feel like the answer will probably be yes, you do. 
And like, there are people that are willing to die on this hill. Like I, the debates I have seen on this is something else. And like, I get the concept that's like, oh, you're not actually reading it. I get that. But in my defense, I'm gonna, let me just give my defense here, Honor, that like with the Mysterious Men Society, I did, after I finished the book, I did flip through the book and go like, oh, this part, oh, this part. And like, you know, look at the illustrations at the beginning of each chapter. So I did that with all four of those books. And then with The Secret Garden, I also flipped through that one because it had illustrations in that edition as well. So, I mean, technically you could say I read parts of it. And then the Myrtle book, I'm not going to be able to say this word. This is not going to go well for that next recent reads. I listened to 62% of it and then I finished it as I read it with the audiobook going. Like I had to bump it up, which also, here's another question for y'all. What speed do you set your audio books at? When I'm doing other things, I typically do it like 1.5. If I'm only listening to that, two. But if it's to match, if it's to match my reading, like, so like when I was reading the Myrtle book, I can't say the book title. When I was reading it to match up what they were saying, I had to bump it up to 3.75 to match my eyeballs, which I was like, wow. How is this? This was like, I felt like I was going 90 to nothing. Like, it was a really interesting experience. I've never done that before. But, like, it was, she wasn't quite there, so I had to just keep bumping her up. And I didn't know it could go that high. But my Libby app let me go that high. I was like, wow. Wow. So, that is all for this video. I'd love to know if you enjoyed this video. Do you want to see more tier rankings? Maybe we could do this, like, every 50 books. Would that be kind of crazy? It might be a little crazy. It might not work out to be in exactly every 50 bucks. It just worked out today because I was like, oh, what am I going to film? And I was going to do like a my top five of the year so far, my top five Kindle Unlimited books of the year so far, my top five disappointments, and like the top five un underrated books. I was going to do like that and give like y'all a goals check-in, but I was like, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. And then I went, oh, tier ranking. I can tier rank it. And so we tier ranked it today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think these colors look a lot better compared to the other one I did. Just, I feel like they flow better. That The one of them just was off to me and I couldn't figure it out when I did it the first time. So now it's better. Now we are good to go. We can do this again and again. Probably not every month, but it will probably, I'll probably do this a couple more times this year, hopefully, because I really like ranking these for some reason. It's organizing. That's why I like it. Oh, wait, I just figured that out. It's because it's organizing, and that is my love language. That is my love language. So, hmm, fun. Okay, that's it for this video, though. Please feel free to chat with me in the comments about any of these. Have you read any of these? Where would you put them? If you've read someone, uh, where did someone? If you've read any of these, where would you put, where did someone come from? If you've read any of these, let me know where you would put them in these categories. And then if you want to share like maybe some of your other recent ones, where would you put them? I'm just curious because I feel like this is a very specific, a very specific organized chart. I do feel like if I could tweak one thing though now after doing this, oh, hang on. Hello, my father. What was I saying? I do not remember what we were talking about, my dear friends. I think I was wrapping up this video. But I hope you enjoyed it. I will see y'all next time. Feel free to chat with me in the comments. Remember about the giveaway that is happening and then our newsletter sign up, all that fun stuff. I will see y'all next time. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com where there is a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every every Friday. That's always the goal. And then I'm also on Instagram and TikTok and Goodreads, YouTube, all the many places, Facebook, every but all the places all the places so we can just expand our TVRs and talk about books here, there, and everywhere. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day, y'all. Bye!